time to get things started on the most sensational, inspirational, celebrational, motivational. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. The World. I'm Septum Sin, and today I am proud to throw up a great show called The Muppet Show. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, The Muppet Show. This is a well defined show. I got these when I was on a Muppet kick. I had seen the new movie and I just got a renewed interest. I always loved the Muppet Caper as a child. I never did get to watch this much as a as a child. And that was a shame really. Um, I did watch the Muppet Caper a lot. I watched Muppets Take Manhattan a lot. Really it was those two. But I never really got into the show until recently. I'd say within the last 10 years. And when you get to my age, 10 years is not as long as, as you would like it to be. And now, finally, I've watched the first three seasons. It's something that ran in the late 70s, early 80s. And it ran for five seasons. As you can tell, there's only three, which is very sad. I bought these, not full price, but decent price. I'd say about 15 to 20 a volume. They had a fourth volume planned. Each volume contains a full season. But alas, due to issues with rights, mainly Star Wars, if I recall correctly, they canned a fourth season release. There's so much, when you come to a variety show, there's so much involved in it. That's why one of my favorite shows, you can't do that on television, doesn't have, well, just in general, does not have a official DVD release. And that's a shame. It is one of the best shows that Nick has put on in classic Nick, at least as far as I'm concerned. But because of the music rights, it makes it nearly impossible. Whenever you have a performer doing something, you've got to get those rights. You've got to get the song rights. You've got to get everything else. And Lucas was a little bit stingy with his rights for Star Wars. So, you know, for somebody who put this out, I really don't understand. But, nevertheless, with Disney having the rights to most of those properties now, I'm hoping that we can finally see a complete series release because I would love to be able to get that. But because this is about physical media and our reviews are physical media based here, at least 90% of the time, this is what I'm reviewing. So let's talk about what The Muppet Show is. Essentially, it's a variety show. Uh, think of The Muppets as Sesame Street for teenagers and adults. You're not really learning as much, it's just a puppet show, essentially. And the whole story behind it is that these Muppets are trying to keep their livelihood up by producing this show in this kind of rundown theater and having guest stars and just in general trying to entertain the populace. So you see varieties of acts. You don't really see as much of a long-running storyline other than a few things, such as, you know, um, Scooter's, uh, I think, uncle or whatnot owning the theater and, uh, that <laughs> and the fact that they're constantly poor. These are things that are just, you, you see this throughout all of the Muppets. Uh, so these are themes that, just in general, are, are Muppet-based themes. Uh, matter of fact, the newer Muppet movie that came out a few years ago, it was kind of a sequel to, to this series. So, what makes it good? Well, first off, The Muppet Show really brought the Muppets into relevance. I mean, many of the characters on this show were were made famous by that show. It, there were things that made it famous beforehand, but it really did 
bring them into your living room on a regular basis and you were able to see that. You were able to get that and learn to love these characters. Without The Muppet Show, I doubt The Muppets would be as big as they are now. With, you know, it's debatable how big they are now, but they are still relevant. Most people know Kermit the Frog if you see them. Most people know, like, Kermit, Piggy, Fozzie, to a lesser extent. <laughs> people know who these, these things are, and that makes it fun. I love the fact that they have these and they're always strapped for cash. I always thought the Muppets, in a time where a lot of you know sitcoms and shows presented people in upper middle class to wealthy status doing things, the Muppets were always strapped for cash. They were always poor. The Muppets, to me, represented pretty much the average American. None of these other places did. I mean, these people were well-to-do. The upper middle class was not the representation of most of America. Most of America was lower middle class to poor. And it still is lower middle class to poor for the most part. Middle middle hmm, is about half. So that was a wonderful aspect of The Muppet Show. Two is the guest stars. You get to see people like Roy Rogers on there. Um, Alice Cooper. I mean, Alice Cooper's episode is probably one of the more entertaining episodes that I can remember on this. There are many people who have gone that were still alive when this was around, and it's just enjoyable to see them do their acts. This is sort of a time capsule. You're able to see these people able to see them in their heyday or a little bit past their heyday and just doing things that lends itself to what it is. And of course there's that element of strangeness and that is something that is almost totally unique to Jim Henson. He has this slight madness that that permeates all of the properties uh, even Sesame Street. If you look at old Sesame Street where Jim Henson was mostly involved, you can see that slight edge of just insanity that's thrown in. And that adds to extra entertainment. These are great characters. They're fleshed out characters and their ways they interact, it just, uh, it just suits them well. This is why they're well recognized in the public eye. So we've talked about good, now let's talk about bad. Well, you know, doing a binge watch of the Muppets, sort of. I, mean, I did this season a long time ago, and then I did the other two seasons more recently. It can get a little bit humdrum at times. Like most variety shows, some acts are good, some acts are amazing, and some acts are meh. And a lot of, there are many of these uh, guest stars that were very relevant at the time, but many, but there were some that were just flashes in the pan, where, yeah, they might have been really big back then, but now they're just kind of, meh. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there were occasions where I'm sitting there saying, guest star, blah, 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 and I'm like, who? Who's that? And I had to sit there and look them up. It's like, oh, okay. So these are, but these are common, these are common pitfalls when it comes to shows like this. You're going to have those when you've got something like the Muppets. So finally, we've had some good, we've had some bad. So in the end, do I recommend the Muppets? Of course I recommend the Muppets. I would consider the Muppet show a seven out of ten. It's not perfect. It's not of the utmost entertainment value. It's something that you would only really want to throw in a few episodes at a time, but it's incredibly important. Those few episodes at a time, I guarantee you, will be entertaining, and it's very well put together. My hat's off to Jim Henson. So, of course, if you like this video, click like, subscribe, and tell me what your thoughts are on The Muppet Show. 
what would you have given the Muppet Show with uh, with your thoughts? Uh, an eight, a ten, a one, or maybe something entirely different? Are you looking forward to trying to get the whole thing out, or are you happy with what's been released? I will see you on the next one.